How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? We are here with Rose Rios. All right, Miss Rose Rios. And what do you do? I am a senior care consultant. Okay, now for those that don't know, of course, you will not know. I met you at the Thai Garden restaurant. You threw, and I'm not going to say it. Tell everybody what you did. At Thai, oh, and what I do personally. Well, at the Thai restaurant. Oh, at the Thai restaurant. Yes, I was just a guest. I okay. was just a guest, part of the meetup group called Zoomers. Okay. Uh, we meet at various uh, venues uh, and eat, drink, <laughs> and dance and have a good time. Now, but what's special about the Zoomers? The though? Zoomers? Okay, yes. the Zoomers, we are actually a group of, yes, seniors, and everyone hates that doggone word, but we are boomers with a zip okay so okay. that's what differentiates us we are sing all 99.99 percent .99 of us are single and okay. we're out there just having a good time doing different events throughout the houston area the houston metropolitan area and just have a blast we're just friends having a good time that, and, and there was what 50, 60 yes, people there. Yes. We were dancing, eating. There's a little bit of drinking going on, yeah. but nothing crazy. We just have a good time with each and, other. And, and before we get really into this interview, I just want to say thank you very much for being open to me as I was sitting at the table with the camera. I know you didn't know who I was no, or anything like that, but I really appreciated uh, you coming and talking to me and we us having that conversation yeah. for like 10 minutes or so. Yeah. And then we decided to finally come here and just kind of highlight you and what do you do. So well, uh, speaking you. of what do you do, what do you do? Okay, uh, everybody is uh, a little concerned about, you know, going back to the seniors right now in okay. our lives. I am a senior care consultant. What does that mean? I help individuals or family members find the appropriate level of care for their loved one based on their specific needs, the location in Houston, and their budget. Okay. Because caring for true seniors that need a little additional help, it's very expensive. And people yes. are under the misconception, oh, well, they have Medicare. Yeah, we all end up having Get Medicare, Medicare. <laughs> at 65. We start qualifying. Yeah. But people don't understand. Now, I want to clarify also, I am not an insurance agent. Okay. I am only speaking from my personal experience because I am 65 plus. Understood. So I've already gone through the Medicare process. Right now is open enrollment for your Part, uh, part C, people call them uh, yeah. Advantage programs. But anyway, going back to how for our elderly and especially if they have specific needs that is all private pay okay. your Medicare Part A Part B that is for your hospital care that is for doctor care your D is for medications mm. you know there's different parts of Medicare but when it comes to housing custodial care mom is getting a little older and she needs a little help she's getting confused with her Medicare Medication, she needs medication assistance, all those things. People become incontinent. Yes. They can't live on their own anymore. They need some help. There's other alternatives. Yes, there's private pay. Going back to that private pay. Yes. Home care. They can come in for a fee and take care of mom and dad. But there is an hourly rate, and right now, after COVID, everything is very, very, very yes, expensive. Yes, inflation is through the roof. Oh my gosh, the days of hiring someone for $12, $13, $14 an hour, that's long gone. Yes. Minimum $24 to $27, $30, $40, $50 an hour per hour with minimums of three to four hours a day with a minimum of three to four days a week. It's very expensive. Yes, there's programs out there to help people that are low, low, low income. Low income. I help the individuals that do have some money that can consider going into an assisted living community, a memory care community, an independent living community. They just want the socialization. They just want to be around other people their age. And there's a lot of studies and proof that that social interaction for people, it keeps us healthy. Yes. It keeps our mind engaged. New it gives us a purpose. There's so many communities in Houston. I mean, there are tons and tons. I have contracts with most of them. Okay. And if I had a client that said, I want to go to XYZ community because I have a friend there and I don't have a contract with them, uh -huh. I can get a contract. 
Understood. I know the ins and outs. I take away the confusion. Where do we start? What do I do? How do I find the appropriate level of care for my mom, for my dad, for my uncle, for my grandmother? Because it's not the senior themselves that are asking for help and they're not dying to go. They think they're going into a nursing home. They are not mm. nursing homes anymore. They are senior retirement communities offering services. And that's good. Yes. That is really good. It's totally changed. It's totally changed. Let, let me ask you a quick question. Is it true that a lot of senior citizens feel like they've been forgotten? Oh, absolutely. Okay, because, you know, I, I remember uh, a conversation I may have had with you. Yes. Uh, just let's say a lot of times we just feel like the world doesn't see us, like we just instantly, yes. magically disappeared yes. or something like that. Yes. You, could you care to speak on that? Yes. I think I mentioned to you, have yes, you? Yes, ma'am. I've been watching Golden Bachelor. You know, <laughs> I mean, he's 72 years old and he's yeah. out there meeting and dating all these beautiful women that are 60, I think there's one that's 60, 65, 70 some odd years old. And and here we are, yes, you know, the older men that are still out there trying to live life, you know, people turn around and say, oh, that's just a dirty old man. No, he's not a dirty old man. There's still <laughs> life in him. Yes. And us older women, I'm 71 years old. Okay. And us older women, it's like we don't get seen anymore. Really? Because we're not the 20, 30, 40 year old pretty girls that we used to be. Okay. But there's still a lot of life in us. And we want to be able to meet someone our age and live life together. Okay. Yes. I, I think that's a great idea and a great thing that you spoke on because, again, um, some people kind of dread going into those uh -huh. later years. Yes. We're um, all headed there. If, if, unfortunately, yes. you know, for everyone. Actually, fortunately. Because okay. what's the alternative? You're gone. <laughs> uh, I'd and I appreciate be... <laughs> you saying that. Thank you so much for clearing that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. So um, what advice would you give to people who are struggling uh, as they progress to their older ages, older years, later years? Plan ahead of time. Okay. Plan ahead of time. I know there's a lot of uh, long-term care insurances. Uh, look into that. Look into it while you're still young to get mm. that per diem because that helps to offset the cost of the retirement community. And how much does it cost? Oh my gosh. I, I'm like seriously, yes. I, yes. I, you know, again, as a sociologist, I look at that and I say, okay, I read is like a minimum of 1.5 mil is what you're going to need once you hit about 65, 70 and if you live to like 90. Yes. Is that true? That is true. Wow. That is true. There's some nice independent living communities that maybe by independent, it would be someone like me. I still cook. I still drive. I still work. I have my own agency, you know, all this kind of good stuff. But it's more for independent living communities. But what they do, you know, they're, they're reasonable. Okay. Let's say maybe under 2000 17 18 1900 dollars okay. but it's for an apartment they offer social events maybe they do bus trips to the grocery store there's independent living but when you get into assisted living depending on the level of care there is going to be a fee for the actual unit anything from a shared apartment and they're not even apartments they may have a little kitchenette with a little okay. refrigerator a little sink Yes. You know, your bedroom, sometimes it's just a suite, one big room. Sometimes you can share that. But what right now, one of the least expensive assisted living communities that I can think of, I'm not going to mention any names, it starts at 2900 Wow, a but month? That's a month. And that's wow. not including if you need additional care, because then there's levels of care. And, you know, I'm glad that you were able to confirm that. Um, this talk of the, the younger generation, and again, we we have to talk, have this conversation. The younger generation of people, especially the uh, females, they feel like they don't need, you know, to prepare, you know what I mean, for these later years as if, almost as if they can live on their own as single women, and even single men as well. They don't need to have it. Would you care to speak on the importance of being able to pair with someone and to work together so you will be able to uh, take care of yourselves financially in your later years. 
Uh, it's very important okay. because even couples, even couples, uh, most of these communities, there's a fee for the one individual going in, but then there's a second occupant fee. Really? Yes. E okay, so, yes. so uh, let me ask you, is for a husband and wife or is just like someone just saying we're going to live together? Uh, it's usually husband and wife. It can be. It can for be someone. For two separate fees. For there's the fee for the unit itself, correct, and then a second occupant fee, and that second occupant wow. fee can be an additional thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. It depends. Again, senior living, senior housing is just like real estate. It's all about location. Okay. So it, it depends where you go. Well, let me ask you. Um, of course. Uh, Baby boomer, I'm assuming. Yes. 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 Alright, so you guys are doing pretty well and have been doing pretty well financially, I would say for the last maybe forty years. But we taper down to the millennials and the generation X's and now you going into the alphas. Um we're not doing that good. And what can we do to financially prepare? Because the fear is there may not be any social security for us. There may not be any Medicare for us. And so a lot of us are really afraid. We don't know what to do. Can you help us? Uh, I would recommend get a financial advisor. Okay. And bottom line, put some money away. I learned a long time ago, it doesn't matter how much you're going to put away, but you have to have that emergency fund. You know, you have to be able to save some money and let it grow and make money for you. Okay. So get a financial advisor because you're right. A lot of the baby boomers, my generation, my mother had six kids, wow. right? There's six children. Uh, there's three of us still living. Um, and then my generation, I had two children. Mm -hmm. We're having less children, so a lot of the baby boomers are hoping their kids are going to help subsidize their income or their living expenses, or they're going to go live with my daughter, I'm going to go live with my, my son, you know, all this kind of good stuff. Right. You can't count on that this because they start having their children, my daughters, you know, they've got kids in high school, they're going to be going to college, and they're going to have to take on mom as well. They're not, I don't want that, I, would, I don't want them to have that burden. So I have prepared ahead of time with a financial planner, a financial advisor to be able to make sure I have some money left over after my Social Security so that I can maintain my lifestyle. Wow. I, I, I have even paid off my end of life um, services. I've got wow. that taken care of. Wow. I already paid it. It's done. I don't want that burden on my daughter. I, I, don't, I don't know what to really say to that. I mean, I think I'm sorry. younger generations of people... They don't think it's going to happen to them. I'm not going to yeah. get there. I don't want to live that long. But they're going to. Maybe. Wow. I hope. <laughs> wow. I, it's, it's, it's my, you have to excuse me if I, if I have to kind of like pause to kind of digest what you just said because, you know, living uh, technically as a millennial, these are conversations that we just haven't had. No. You know what I mean? And um, in the society of instant gratification, yeah. it's a society of, I want it now. Okay. You know, everything is about having it now. You know, we've got our, here, here sits my cell phone, you've got yours. You know, we're waiting for that next client to call or if I need to look up something. You know, we live in a society that's very fast paced. It is. And it's all about get it done yesterday, you know, the, and the wants, you know, there's a difference between wants and needs. needs if you can just put a little bit of that want aside and put some money, I'm not a financial advisor, but I would say put a little money aside and don't touch it and let it grow. And okay. people do need to start thinking about the future. What is going to happen to me in 30 years, in 40 years, 50 years? Who am I? And you cannot count on the government. Uh, you know what? I no, hear that uh, that cannot. conversational piece a lot. No matter what uh, dinner table I sit at, yes. no matter who I speak to uh, as far as interviewing, they all say the same thing. But let me ask you this. If you could make a prediction for millennials, Generation Xers, uh, even the new alpha generation that's coming up, 
what would that prediction be? Uh, wow. I mean, I have grandkids. Uh, I have, my oldest granddaughter is 22. Uh, I have two grandsons here, 15 and 17. And my prediction is I hope they really do see what's happening around them mm -hmm. and open up their eyes to the reality of it's going to be them one day. Yeah. And what are you going to do to prepare for that day? Okay. I mean, who knows? I mean, I, I can't predict. I'm just hoping that people do take life seriously. We do want to live in the moment, enjoy our life in the moment. But there is a future. What are we going to be doing 10 years from now, 20 years from now? Especially the young people. Because you cannot count on other people taking care of you. I get those phone calls every day. Really? Mom only gets $1,200 in Social Security. Uh, does she know it, need to go into a nursing home? There's certain pre-qualifications. Pre People may qualify financially to go into a subsidized nursing home, you know, a facility, okay. but do they qualify clinically, medically? And mm. you don't want to be at that point of you have no other choice because the sub those those facilities those communities are subsidized by the government okay and they are not going to be as nice as we would like them to be well let me ask you they try their best no i believe they, they do they, they try their best i've done i've i started out in, in this industry doing independent living for about three three and a half years i wanted to learn the assisted living memory care side of it uh i did eight years in the skilled nursing world i wanted to learn hospice so i did six months in hospice so I could understand the continuum of care mm -hmm. and uh, the people that I run into thinking, oh, it's going to be okay because we have Medicaid. There's certain requirements for you to get on Medicaid and also then qualify to go into a skilled nursing facility on a long-term basis. Wow. So plan now. Make your money. If you're independent, pay those Social Security taxes. That's what that Social Security is based on. Okay. You know, a lot of people are going out there and I want to be, um, the perfect example is I hear people, I want to be a traveling nurse. They're getting paid on a 1099. Not only do they have to pay their income tax, but their Social Security taxes, plus they have to pay the portion that the employer, that, that the employer would normally pay. They don't realize that now they're paying double on their Social Security because really? that income is what is going to base your Social Security benefits when the time comes at 65. So really what I'm hearing from you is um, pay now or pay later. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Well, let, let's start here. Um, do you think that federal government entities and uh, state entities can do more for seniors? Uh, more? Or should do more? There, there's a big divide. Oh. The people that have the money and the people that don't. We do, and you hear the terminology, that donut hole in mm. insurance. You're okay. in between benefits. When do you pay private and when does insurance kick in? The same thing applies to our living and custodial, our housing. Okay. Um, they can only do so much with the money that they have. Wow. Uh, there's more and more government housing becoming available. Okay. There is. There's certain requirements for the individuals, but do you want to get to that point where you have to have the government pain your mm -hmm. housing it's difficult to say because you know and again speaking from a, a millennials perspective yes. it's okay you're going to get paid um nowadays like you say a minimum minimum of 15 dollars to maybe 20 dollars minimum all right and then out of that that's better than the 725 my, first, my my no i think my very first job i got 235 an hour working retail but, you know, the dollar was worth so much i know more. i know <laughs> Gotta be fair about it. I know. But I'm just I'm looking at that and I'm saying, okay, they're gonna take out 
30% in taxes from a mid, roughly 30% okay. in taxes. Okay. So now you're left with about 70% of income and then you have like this expensive rent, you got this expensive food and you have these expensive insurance for the car. Yes, I know. And then you have the expensive car note, like where do millennials and uh, Generation X's and Z's and Alphas, where, where do we get that money? Okay, I'm gonna go back to an example that okay. I give everyone, okay? My fantasy car is a little Jaguar. <laughs> I have always wanted that little hot, little sporty Jaguar. Okay. But I can't afford it. Okay. It's a hundred thousand dollars. So I buy. I have a nice Honda Accord. Okay. I stay within my budget. <laughs> that is hard for a lot of Americans to you really have to. stay within the budget, um, especially in the um, uh, country that's <laughs> built on revolves around credit. <laughs> And I don't mean like personal credit. I mean like, like for this country, credit is like currency, unfortunately for this country. And so everything is credit, 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 credit ratings, credit cards, credit accounts. You know what I mean? Like how, do, what's going on? How do we balance that? How do we fuse all this together? Separating your needs from your wants. Okay. There's nothing wrong with wants. I want, but build up to it and don't go in debt to the point of not having resources to pay for your needs. Understood. There's a big difference between needs and wants. Again, I want a Jag. I can't afford a Jag, so I buy a Honda. Okay, and Honda's a great car, by the way. Honda's a great car, that's my third one. You they, know? I've seen them go about 300,000 miles yes. on those cars, so yes. I, I don't want to hear anybody talking crap about Honda, right. you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> So again, separating my needs from my wants, um, doing without, uh, do I want to go take a nice vacation? Heck yeah. But right now is not a good time, you okay. know? So I'm not going to take a, I took a road trip to visit a girlfriend, but that was just a road trip. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of things I want to do, but I'm thinking of long term. I got to say, uh, having this conversation with you, and even though I know I'm behind the camera, you have really put some things in perspective for me um, because I like cameras and I like lenses and my lenses are like $1,500, you know what I mean? And I love these things, but again, What's your return you. on investment? I always talk about ROI. Ugh. Okay, what's your ROI on that fancy lens? Could you still use this lens tomorrow or do you have to have that no, new I, one? I'm just I playing. No, 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 but, but that's a real question. Yes. I do not need a two thousand dollar lens i don't i don't i can get it done i'm using professional glass i'm yes. gonna tell you that right now but i can get it done with ordinary professional glass i don't have to have the ultra 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 right ultra. right there you go but i do appreciate you uh let's wrap it up uh where can people find you oh um my email address is rrios004 at comcast.net. Okay. Um, my telephone number is 281-703-9503. Okay. I have a website, but it's still being in development. I've had my own agency for three years. All of my business has been through word of mouth. Really? I've, uh, I've been in this industry 16 years. Okay. And because of the reputation that I have been able to develop with other professionals, uh, physicians, social workers from the hospitals, um, I'll get a text message from some, I'll get a text message from a doctor. Rose, call Michael. Here's his phone number. Wow. And that's all I get. And I get on the phone, I call Michael. Michael, Dr. Joe Blow asked me to give you a call. What's going on? Mm. Well, my mom is in the hospital and they're telling me da blah 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 blah. Mm. And that's how my referrals, a lot of word of mouth, other people that I have helped with their loved ones, that's where my business comes in. Okay. Just word of mouth. So you have a really good solid reputation amongst the community in Houston. I've tried. I've tried. I'm a patient advocate. Okay. I am going to do what's best for that individual needing the care. Okay. I am going to do my best to place them within their budget. Uh, it may not be their location because maybe they live in the Galleria, but I have some place, a super nice assisted living community. It might be in Richmond. Okay. So you may have to drive a little further to go see mom once a week on a Saturday. Because that's and what is, you're doing. Uh, is once a week really <laughs> enough? I don't know. I don't, okay. <laughs> you Fair know, enough. is it enough? 
is it enough? I don't know. Like I said, I've been in this industry. I've, been, I've worked in the buildings. I know what it's like to be in a building taking care of the elderly, keeping them engaged, making sure that they're getting the level of care that they need. It's always been on the sales and marketing business development side, but I am selling the care that a community is going to provide for that loved one. Understood. So it's not about me. It's about the care that you're going to give. So is it my reputation? To some extent, because I'm liable as an LLC, I am liable for where I, who I recommend to individuals. Understood, understood. If I can't recommend, we could go, go on forever and ever. There's, type, there's independent individuals, there's type A, type B, there's all these regulations that have to be abided by. I cannot legally place a bedridden individual into a community that's not licensed to, to be able to that. take care of that, that individual. There's people out there doing it. Beware. Really? A buyer, beware. Yes. Mm, that's an ethical They're not licensed. You have to be careful about that. It may be fine for someone that's independent, still sharp in their mind. They know what's going on. They just need a little bit of supervision. They're a little lower budget, so it might be a little bit more affordable. But some of these communities are charging just as much as the big, you know. And it's not right. It's not right. It's not right. So buyer beware. Know where you're going. Always tour. Always go in there and visit before you make decisions. I will never recommend a community that I haven't laid eyes on. Cause, That's good to know. Because I am shopping. People shop with their eyes. Mm -hmm. People shop with their nose. What they smell. They shop with their ears. What are they hearing? How are the caregivers talking to the residents? Understood. Touch. Ooh, do I want to touch that? I, I need to go to the bathroom. Do I want to touch that sink? You know what I mean? And then their mouth. You know, what does the food taste like? People use five senses to buy in a retirement community. So go visit. Always go visit. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it up okay. here. And I'm going to say thank you very much for coming out. Uh, you have most definitely gave me something to think about and I know if you gave me something to think about of all people I know everybody else is gonna see this video is gonna have something to really think about consider and to apply more importantly yes, yes. For their daily life I to live so. for tomorrow. So. Thank you so much for coming You're out. Welcome. Today. Thank you for having me. Yes, I appreciate it